Consciousness is, among other things, a spontaneous exercise in creativity. You are learning now in a three-dimensional context the ways in which your emotional and psychic existence can create varieties of physical form. You manipulate within the psychic environment and these manipulations are then automatically impressed upon the physical mold. Now, our environment is in itself creative in a different manner than yours. Your environment is creative in that trees bear fruit, that there is a self-sustaining principle, that the earth feeds its own, for example. The naturally creative aspects are the materializations of the deepest psychic, spiritual, and physical inclinations of the species, set up in your terms eons ago, and a part of the racial bank of psychic knowledge. We endow the elements of our environment with an even greater creativity that is difficult to explain. We do not have flowers that grow, for example, but the intensity, the condensed psychic strength of our psychological natures forms new dimensions of activity. If you paint a picture within three-dimensional existence, then the painting must be on a flat surface, merely hinting at the complete three-dimensional experience that you cannot insert into it. In our environment, however, we could actually create whatever dimensional effects we desired. All of these abilities are not ours alone. They are your heritage. As you will see later in this book, you exercise your own inner senses and multi-dimensional abilities more frequently than it might seem in other states of consciousness than the normal waking one. Since my own environment does not have easily defined physical elements, you will be able to understand its nature by inference as I explain some related topics throughout this book. Your own physical environment appears as it does to you because of your own psychological structure. If you gained your sense of personal continuity through associative processes primarily, rather than as a result of familiarity of self-moving through time, then you would experience physical reality in an entirely different fashion. Objects from the past and present could be perceived at once. Their presence justified through associative connections. Say that your father throughout his lifetime had eight favorite chairs. If your perceptive mechanisms were primarily set up as a result of intuitive association rather than time sequence, then you would perceive all these chairs at one time. Or seeing one would make you aware of the others. So environment is not a separate thing in itself but the result of perceptive patterns, and these are determined by psychological structure. So if you want to know what my environment is like, you will have to understand what I am. In order to explain, I shall have to speak about the nature of consciousness in general. In doing so, I shall end up telling you much about yourself. The inner portions of your identity are already aware of much that I will tell you. Part of my purpose is to acquaint your egotistical self with knowledge that is already known to a larger portion of your own consciousness that you have long ignored. You look out into the physical universe and interpret reality according to the information received from your outer senses. I will stand, figuratively speaking, in physical reality and look inward for you and describe those realities of consciousness and experience that you are presently too fascinated to see. For you are fascinated with physical reality, and you are in as deep a trance now as the woman is through whom I write this book. All of your attention is focused in a highly specialized way upon one shining bright point that you call reality. There are other realities all about you, but you ignore their existence and you blot out all stimuli that come from them. There is a reason for such a trance, as you will discover, but little by little, you must wake up. My purpose is to open your inner eyes.